Hello Hattrickers, it's time for episode 56 of Let's Play Hattrick in San Marino within the Calvejo. Let's start out by making the youth pool in this episode where we will also be comparing the cycles in Denmark and San Marino, just because both of the cycles are now more than two seasons in. But first, the youth pool. Last week we called Primo Roman first, so let's try Pietro first this week. 16 years old, poor defending, weak passing, potential, easy rejection. Giorgio, let's see. Uh, no, no spec at least, 16 years old. Can emerge with inadequate, there's no reason to even consider it. Primo, let's see, 15 years old. So he's weak, weak, 15 years. No spec, Tommaso Santini. I think we'll leave him in the squad for now. Perhaps uh, we can try him out or something. But uh, I'm contemplating firing already. Let's take a look at the youth match against the young Famasia, where we lost five goals to nothing. But that's not the main concern here. We are looking at Mozzarella, Meletti, and Mengi and their performances. And Meletti playing five stars in the middle now. Mengi four. Mozzarella 7.5 stars. Looking good up front. Let's just see what the coach said before this match. Mengi reported as one of the best in the academy. And if we look at the player overview, we should be able to see the progress here with the red bar. Mengi could reveal something interesting in playmaking, but he might not be very talented in uh, this regard, seeing he only plays to four stars as in the midfielder. Let's see if we can scroll down and find Meletti. 36 days until promotion now, and he is moving ever so close. He should be able to make it because we have a friendly in the coming week and we will just do whatever we can in order to boost him towards his uh, end goals in playmaking and passing. Mozzarella, we will not be able to finish his uh, scoring and he is promotable in 26 days. It will be interesting to see what kind of money he will be able to bring to the squad because we cannot be training him in defense. That's not relevant for his uh, future career in Hattrick. So we will try to make as much money we can from his transfer. Last week, I forgot to introduce the new player in the side. Let's just check by arrival here and see that we have found Juan Salvador Martorell. He's a world-class playmaker and uh, we'll be looking to add some levels in defense for him to, uh, to improve his value. And uh, obviously he's a profit player for us. If we look at the training this week, we'll see that he actually popped first week from poor to weak defending. And uh, we also had Lorenzo Monterio up from excellent to formidable. So we've updated the sheet as of uh, Friday, the training update, and we have Sonati at the age of 19 now, looking pretty good at 2113 HTMS. We do have to bear in mind that we've only been training defense and playmaking, so that's the only skills he's been popping in, that he has a high sub-level in scoring as well. Ontario marked with the pop here as well. We've also marked the mozzarella, obviously. It's uh, looking all right. Um, and we will be able to further add this analysis by looking at the comparison sheet with all the assets as we move on to comparing the two cycles to each other now. So let's start looking at the numbers, the financial capabilities in each of the cycles. We start out by looking at the assets in San Marino. Right now we have 13 million in assets and the expectation uh, I've made here is uh, simply by writing up what we do expect to make or earn passively for a season. So uh, about 1.5 million euros. Um, and we've set the same expectation in both cycles in Denmark and San Marino, even though we will be able to make more passively in San Marino. I'll explain why later. All right. So if we look at the profit players in San Marino, we have Daniel Ruling at 220,000 euros and we have Kiva 150,000. These are not as high potential profit players as most of the other guys, but um, still have them. Uh, Kiva is a bake arrangement. A bake returned from the cycle in Denmark. And uh, again, I'll touch on the reason why we do this in San Marino or not in Denmark uh, later, but it's tied to the fact that it's easier to make money in San Marino, I'll tell you that much. We have Monterio, he's actually up for sale right now, so that's the reason why you see his uh, 
transfer compare at the same level as the expectation in this column. We have Marassi, Akemo, Lotka, and Matorel, and they are slightly more profitable in their expectation than perhaps most of the other guys. The way I have made the expectation of the transfer compare is simply by looking at the, the transfer compare with half a season or full seasons training in defense. And the, the reason why I make this flexible is because for some players it makes sense to train them half a season now, for some players it makes sense to train them a full season. And uh, I had to be flexible in order to make a meaningful number out of this uh, row here. But if we look at the expectation, we are around 32 million euros. And uh, we have to add the money, of course, and that leaves us at 46 million euros with the expectations in San Marino taken into account. Of course, we don't take the, the core players into consideration, but I have the figures here simply because it's nice for the sake of comparing the, the strength of the homegrown players in each of the cycles. So let's look at the expectation in Denmark where we have Raul Villacha and uh, and if you note here the the potential in the profit is a bit higher uh, for most of the players here. We have Villacha, he's uh, a wing turning into a wingback obviously because we're training defense right now. We have Maganda, he's an inner midfielder. He's actually a uh, 21s prospect in Zambia and uh, that might interfere a little with the expectation because perhaps I cannot just fully go on with the plan I intended. We have Asil Erdogan, he's a winger and he's getting additional defense. Uh, we have Dolf Alsgraf, he's a profit bake player arrangement, which is ending quite soon. In a midfielder, we have Klaus Wigand, he's a keeper. Great profit potential because we found him at a good price. And we have Fermin Paz, a winger, turning into a wingback moment. Right now, we are actually trying to sell Kaganovic, who's an inner midfielder as well. So we do have a bit more expectation profit-wise in Denmark. And the reason why is partly due to the fact that we started out in Denmark with an awesome youth pool, giving us 7 million to invest in the future uh, to find profit players and earn money on. And obviously that gives a head start compared to San Marino. And there's the fact that we are basically making the a big arrangement in San Marino for the Danish team. Another factor is that we've been training continuously defending in Denmark for two seasons while we tried to make profit and we've been splitting the two seasons in San Marino with one season of playmaking and one season of defense. That change also had me trying to get Daniel Ruling over. He was uh, we, we kept him in the next cycle simply because he's he's coming from a 50% slot and his initial potential for profit has been lower. We are taking advantage of the fact that passive money making in San Marino will be easier in Denmark. That's why the team from San Marino will play the international friendly in Denmark each week. The deficit of the 6,000 euros that we have to pay for traveling each week will be made up easily once we start building the fan club. And if you compare the number of fans in each of the teams, you'll see the fundamental difference. Let's just take a look at that. Right, so here we are in Inter Kalbahau. A team started later than the Danish team and we are at 2,100 members in the fan club already. If we look at the same page for the Danish team, we are at 1,824 members. And the difference difference in the ability to make money passively is more than made up by the, the weekly uh, expenditure of 6,000 euros of traveling to Denmark. So that's the reason why I've chosen to do so. If we look at the uh, actual transfer compare of the players in question, you'll see that it's actually higher in San Marino at the moment than in Denmark. And that's due to the raw talent of the players in question. However, if we look at the players with specs and everything taken into consideration, we'll find that we probably will find the players in Denmark are ahead of the players in San Marino. Let me show you guys. Right, we have Camellini here and uh, he's uh, coming along nicely. You can definitely tell that he is slightly behind uh, the likes of Sonati, but uh, Sanati rated quite highly because of his double outstanding uh, defending and playmaking situation at the moment. And that's the reason why he is uh, he's has a transfer evaluation of uh, 24 million Danish, so 2.4 million euros, right? Um, but there's no spec on Frangioni or Camellini. Let me just pull up the player page in Denmark. If you if you look at Nils Hauke here, he's outstanding defending. You can definitely tell that we've only been training defending so far in Denmark, but he has a head specialty. If we look at uh, Van Elisau, he has the same specialty. He's also outstanding. A little further in his defending training as well and better side skills as well. If 
we look at Rigo Ostrup here, his evaluation is lower than Sanacci's, but that's due to the fact that he's only received defending training, but he's very far ahead now, magnificent uh, defending at the moment, looking to gain two more levels before we swap to the playmaking uh, cycle in Denmark. So if we look at value right now, we see the San Marinese bunch being ahead of the Danish players, but in terms of raw strength and uh, talent and taking the specialties into consideration, the Danish team is, is ahead. Also, not only in specs, but also in, in raw skills, but it's not due to the fact that it's a wee, the, the team is a wee longer in the process. Uh, they are slightly more talented from, uh, from the beginning of the cycle. That's all for the cycle comparison at this point. Let's take a look at the midweek friendly between these two teams where we had Inter Calvajal winning by two goals to nothing and that was in regular time. No injuries, no sending offs, just good old training and uh, no extra time. Two goals from corners, special events uh, does that sometimes in the, in the plans to get extra training. Um, unfortunately, so we cannot get it every week. But at this point, training defending in both teams, it's hard to really utilize. It's more crucial once you train uh, for instance, playmaking where you have 50% slots. Sunday evening, we played a very important match against Berlin United at home. And here's the highlights from the live stream Sunday evening. Down the left, here we are. Juan Salvador Matorel. Yes. Juan Salvador Matorel in his first official match for the club as well. Calvejo up one goal to nothing. 66 minute minutes in excellent there you go just takes one goal to beat pressing i hope so oh that's just not good oh no here comes a regular chance for berlin perhaps it takes one more goal oh the attack was uh, in the weakest sector here luckily for us so we came out victorious one goal to nothing thanks to the goal by Juan Salvador Matorel in the 66th minute. And uh, if we analyze a bit on this victory, we are a little lucky that Berlin United played pressing in this one and uh, also a little lucky that they missed the one chance in the right sector. We are really satisfied with winning this encounter because I do feel that it shows some progression during the season. I don't think we had any chance of beating Berlin United last season and coming up with a victory this season feels very good. If we look at the table, it's still very open because we have Charles Lancia and Berlin United playing in the final round of the season and only three goals separating them. So Berlin United could actually win the league by winning by two goals or more in the final round against Giannis Lancia. We are fairly certain to finish third with uh, this victory, which is always nice. We play the unknowns in the final game of the season. That's all for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon and have a great week in Hattrick.